Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the podcast series for beginner web developers and general web enthusiasts. Now, introducing your show hosts, Michael Budd, Fraser Hart, Lewis Keynes, and Ed Mann. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the PHP podcast and, uh, and podcast for web enthusiasts. Uh, so we're covering everything web and mainly aimed at people who are starting out in web development or programming and just want to learn more. So uh, uh, today I am joined by Lewis Keynes. Good evening. And Fraser Hart. Good evening. But no Ed Mann tonight because he is uh, in Scotland, I believe. What's he uh, doing in Scotland? <laughs> I have no. I think he's doing some photography. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, like, like hey, personal photography or for I a project. Th- I think personal. Yeah. Oh, that's, I didn't realize he was. Uh, he was a photographer. To be honest. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that's uh, one of his like you know other loves other than programming. Oh no way! I had, I had no idea about that whatsoever. So it uh, shows how well I know. <laughs> who's, he, who's he gone up there with then? Um, I think family. Pretty sure. Uh, you know so. what this is though? They don't you? This is the this is the three devs. No, maybe. Absolutely, yeah, the maybe are, is... Uh, the three Fs, and Ed was the maybe. Yeah, exactly. Prophecies come true. So, yeah. Um, but we will plough on without the intelligent one. So it's probably going to be... Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you're going to hear us mumble for about an hour and then uh, kind of <laughs> sit here contradicting ourselves. But uh, we'll see how we do. I'm probably going to find myself going, now, Ed, what do you think of that? And, uh, <laughs> and like, it's there. It was like buckets of silence uh, while we all hope and pray that Ed's going to come chime in with, <laughs> with some words of wisdom. Uh, is this why we've gone for seeing... Yeah, exactly. We've gone for a more manageable topic. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Not e- even us can't get this wrong, I'm sure. So, well, we'll see what we can do anyway. Yeah, Give absolutely. What's the, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. That's <laughs> it. We'll see how we go. Uh, yeah. So, um, Lou, good week. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. Awful week. Oh, well, and it's oh, not man. even done yet. We're only on Wednesday. Uh, oh no, it's uh, no, it's not been terrible. It's just uh, it's been. One of the one of the more frustrating weeks since I started doing the job, I think, um, which I guess we all go through it at one point or another. But um, yeah, I'm kind of at that point at the moment where I seem to be encountering a lot of things where I where I haven't come across before, and everything feels like um, it's, it's falling apart, kind of. But oh, the actual site's not falling apart; it's just certain parts of the site that I'm working on are just going wrong. And uh, to any any developers out there that uh, think that we're all spot on all the time i'm here to say that i'm having a nightmare at the moment so if you are as well then i feel your pain but yeah <laughs> two words v cards oh, is that one word i can't even get that right <laughs> so hyphenated yeah do you call hyphenated kind of words two words or one uh, i don't think no. it's even hyphenated is it? no it's not is it no v card just... and h card is just yeah so this is what happens I can when think Ed's not here. A few words to put in front of it that could make it into two words. Silly Billy V cards. Silly Billy V cards. Yeah, crazy. It's first that it's taken too long. Side of kind of problem and still in a solution. Um, but yeah, and it's been hard. I've been through. Um, been through so many articles on Stack Overflow and, and tutorials and things, and they, the annoying thing is they all say the same thing, pretty much. And that's what I've been doing, and it's not working. And um, as I was saying to Fraser just then, the real problem with it is it's not like um, when something wrong mode and like your browser crashes and so you know you've got a nice error message that you can work with. All that all that happens is it tries to open up the address book on your on your computer, and then it just gets this known portable card found. Um, so you know, there's, I don't even really know where to where to go back to. I've tried I've tried doing the same thing in so many different ways, and still nothing is working as yet. But when when I do find the solution, the whole world will know about it. Basically, you still there, guy? Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So it went quiet. I thought that might have been my computer. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so, as soon as I get to the bottom of this one. But yeah, this is this is definitely the single biggest challenge I've met since I started doing the job. Yeah, because this is the one you were talking about last week as well, isn't it? Yeah, this yeah. is something that, I mean, I, I haven't touched it for, I don't know, four or five days coming up today. I thought I'd have a little break and focus on other bits of the site and then come back to it because invariably, you know, you you come at it with a different approach and suddenly you might find a way that works or or whatever. But yeah. unfortunately, that has happened. And the worst part is that um, last time I spoke about this, it was working locally and now it's not even working locally. 
So uh, shocking. And you've not uh, changed anything, anything in between that that could have caused it to to stop or. No, not from the starting point. Oh. No, I literally, I, I even um, went back to one of my previous commits. So yeah. I'm using Git and uh, back to when I know it definitely worked, and and it's not working. It doesn't. So yeah, it's uh, that's it's bizarre. Just, it's one of those. Yeah. So so that's been my week. The rest of it's been been all right. You know, I've, the rest of the site's virtually done now. To be honest, it's just you know this is the the icing on the cake, but it's uh, it's causing me a big headache at the moment. Oh man, that sounds uh... yeah pretty horrendous but actually i know i always bang on about this but i hope it is like the one message that gets through to people that you know even if you've been doing it for years like us free have you still do get problems that that yeah. really stump you and, and you will have days when you feel pretty stupid but you're not you know it, it's just you know this is what happens and uh and like fraser i know you were saying last week that you you've had something where you know you got really stumped on it and you've had to leave it for a little while and come back to it and and I, i've had the same things and everyone gets it and um yeah if you do have those experiences don't give up just keep playing through and you know you, you'll learn these things and you'll never forget them so yeah um, absolutely yeah. you know i always find part of the <laughs> a big part of the debugging process is a guy in the office and we both do do the same to each other like yeah. quite often we'll run into something we'll be sitting there like trying really like just can't work out what's wrong can't work out what's wrong like going over your code going over your code going over your code and sometimes all it takes is sitting there kind of explaining what you're doing to someone yeah. and then it'll pop straight into your head like well, you guys obviously know Jez, and there was yeah once once today it was it was one of those things. He came to me and said, "Look, can you just have a look over this code for me, or can I explain it to you?" And it was something that he'd been sitting there like struggling on for a, about half an hour, and then I literally go in there, and before he's finished telling me what the problem is, it's kind of like click something in his brain, and he's like, "Think, oh okay, crap, that's what that's what it was." Yeah, and it just takes that process of actually getting it out of your head and kind of I don't know, maybe maybe it's it's the the whole process of involving somebody, or if it's yeah, I don't know if you if you I, talk yeah. about things differently to the way you think about them, but it's yeah, yeah it's definitely worth worth sharing it. That I think is, this is part of, part of my problem at the moment is yeah, I don't have any other developers that I work with right. that I can yeah, and I and yeah, I'm missing that a lot at the moment. The the other the PDF stuff I've, that I've been working on as well, I could have done with someone. Although I'm more or less on top of that, but yeah, having someone there just just a fresh pair of eyes on anything can sometimes just make absolutely all the difference. yeah yeah that is really tough. If you've got no one to to bounce off, no, that's really hard. Because that is just yeah. you against the world, but um, yeah, no, I feel your pain, man, and uh, but I'm sure you'll get there. But yeah. um, the other thing I was going to say last week, actually, and I'm not going to mention names or where, why, how, or any of the details. But if if you are well, hopefully, I'd like it'd be great to hear that if any of you guys have been listening to podcasts and since have got a job in web development or you've taken on a junior role, one of the things I would say is if if you're taking on a junior role, you should be expected to do a junior's job. So if you're suddenly you know, given a load of work to do that that's above what you know, don't you take that personally, or and don't feel negative about it yourself. That it's up to the to people to manage you correctly. Um, and I, I, you know, I've seen that before. I'm sure we all have at some point. And uh, you know, just don't let it get to you. Just keep on doing what you're doing. As long as you go into an interview and you say exactly what you know, you can't be held accountable if you suddenly give something you don't know how to do. You know, it's up to the company to teach you and and to make sure you're ready to do that. So. Uh, but it's just impossible to know everything as well. You oh, know, absolutely. You're not, you're yeah, because yeah, we've been doing it for, for however many years we've been doing it combined. And like, there doesn't a day go by that that I think, well, what's this? Like, I've never even seen this thing before. And it's kind of like it's stuff that some people are kind of just rolling off the cuff like it's, yeah. like it's anything. But I've, I've never even heard of it. And it, it happens every single day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah completely. And that's, yeah. that to me is, is what makes the, the, the job so so attractive and so rewarding the fact that every day you do come across something new and you're not kind of like sitting there banging out the same bit of code all the time there's always new techniques to learn and, and it keeps it interesting and it's yeah it's, it's awesome yeah yeah, yeah. Completely agree. you had a good week mike how's, how's things going for you um yeah not too bad thanks mate i've uh, you know had a couple of uh assignments back and stuff and i, I won't mention scores and stuff but I, i'm quite happy with how i've done and stuff so that's you know, that's been really good, you know. Oh, that's good. You're not mentioning it for that reason. That's good. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, you know, I just don't like talking about it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with what I've got. And, uh, you know, it's just good to see, uh, you know, the fruition of your labour, really, I guess. So, uh, which is kind of what we've just been talking about. You know, you're working hard and you will eventually see the results. So, uh, yeah, that's been been all good. But, um, yeah, like I said, I bang on about the same thing every week. But, uh, yeah, just really working hard with uni at the moment and, uh just trying to uh, to balance everything. So um, 
but on the whole, can't complain. Just very tired. So yeah. yeah. How's your expecting wife doing? Is she okay? She's very good. Um, unfortunately, she does feel sick every day <laughs> of the week. Like, <laughs> I, I kid you not, every single day. But um, yeah. She's... Yeah, me too. Probably for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see that, that that Family Guy where Peter's like to, like complaining about Lois being pregnant. It's like oh, it wasn't just bad for her; it was bad for me as well. And they do one of the cutbacks, and she's like chucking up in the toilet, and he's laying on the bed, turning the volume on the TV up. <laughs> yeah, mate. I know who joke, but seriously, it is quite tough for me as well because like, oh, absolutely, man. I can imagine Abby's like really fidgety, and yep. and she's too hot, she's too cold. I honestly. I think there's an argument there that it is harder for the man than it is a woman. But um, yeah, oh, I'll step like that. I'm gonna... <laughs> this is venturing into dangerous yeah, water. I was just staring there. I don't really mean it. But uh, yeah, no, she's all good. Thanks, mate. She's uh, really is she good. showing yet? Um, just a tiny, tiny little bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's quite cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's getting quite exciting. Obviously, yeah, got another five months to go, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, fun times. Fun times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Fraser? Good week. Uh, it's been yeah, it's been an interesting one. I've spent since Friday, um, or yeah, since Friday morning. It feels like I've spent most of my time on the phone to one-on-one support. It's been absolutely <laughs> brutal. Like we've got a client that's come to us. He's got a, a website which has been written in Perl, which is just horrific. If you've ever looked at Perl, like it, I'm, I'm yeah, sure to people yeah. who understand Perl and views Perl before, it's 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 a lot more intuitive than it is to me. But mm. like it's just horrific. Yeah. So they wanted us to basically take over their website and. And reskin it essentially, um, but then so we did the reskin. We we put it out for them, and then on Friday, all of a sudden their their checkout stopped working. Uh, so the clients on the phone said, so, oh, "What have you done? What have you done to the website?" And then after a bit of delving, it turned out that their SSL certificate had expired. Um, so we basically said, "Oh, your SSL certificate expired, so you have to go and get a new one from from one and one, which is where they're hosting it because they didn't want to host it with us." Um, so we sent them on the way, and then. About ten minutes later, the phone rings again. What do you mean we got to get another SSL? And it's basically a lot of this back and forth. So we they put it in our hands to basically sort this out with one on one. But because we were sorting it out with one on one, it then stopped being one on one's problem and started being our problem in, in the eyes of the client. Anyway, so one and one and not one. Absolutely, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I had well, I, I went through the process in their control panel of setting up the SSL certificate, and they got the they got the email from GeoTrust saying, "Oh, can you approve this?" And then so they approved that. And then I called up one on one just to make sure that everything everything was in order. This was on the like Friday afternoon, so I called up one on one and basically said, "Yeah, they've done everything. Can you just make sure that, or can you just confirm to me that everything's in order and it's yeah the process is is kicking back in?" So yeah, no problem. Yeah, that's all, all working fine. So I went away for the weekend. Came in on Monday, like a slew of emails saying, "Oh, it's still not working. This thing hadn't been set up still." Oh, um, great start to the week. Absolutely, yeah. So <laughs> I had to get on the phone to one on one again. Like and they've got the call centers in the US. I think it's in the US. Like everyone that I spoke to had an American accent, but it was like the the first person you call you you get through to is like a general a general person. So you sit there and you say, okay, yeah, I'm such and such. I'm calling from such and such on behalf of such and such. Uh, this is a situation, and they're like, okay, we'll put you through to the server department. <laughs> so then you get put through to the server department, and then like. They've not said what the phone calls about to the server department, so you have to do the whole like oh. two minute intro. My name's such and such, calling on behalf of such and such. Blah, blah blah. This is what's happened. This is what we're expecting to happen. This isn't what. Ha- this is what's not happening. And then that like you hear a bit of tapping, and then oh yeah, there's there's been an issue like with the, the SSL certificate. It's like, oh, can you tell me what the issue is? No, it just says it's an error. So, oh, I'll, do, I'll cancel this one, and then you just have to apply for another one. I'm like, well, can you assure me that this is going to work? Oh. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's definitely going to work. So I've cancelled the other one. So they just have to go through the process. So, okay, went through the process again. Exactly the same thing oh, happened oh, again. Oh, rubbish. And then, yeah, so I called him up. And then, and then like, the third time I called back as well. Like, the guy was, like, the, the guy basically said, oh, yeah, you just need to apply for another one. I was like, well, we've been through this process twice. And you just turned me through exactly the same thing again. How can I be sure that, that this is actually going to work this time? I said, like, oh, okay, let's put you on hold. So he put me on hold. And then, and then what the, was hold, the hold music. That's the thing. I can't remember what it was. It was crap, though. <laughs> um, it might just mean because I was a little bit angry by then, but yeah. So I got put on hold, and then like kind of like bobbing along to this hold music, and all of a sudden the line went dead, and he hung up on me. Oh. <laughs> like shocking! So I had to do the phone call again. So I had to call back. So I got the first the person at the front desk again, and then I had to do the whole two minute. Oh, this is who I am. This is who I'm calling from. And they put me through to the server department, and I had to speak to it. Like luckily it was a different person. He was a lot more helpful, but it was just oh, it was so brutal. And in oh. in the end, 
they reckoned that the issue was because the initial certificate had been issued like in 2009 it was a 124 bit and it needed to be a 248 bit or I don't really understand to be honest right. with you so yeah finally they got the SSL working so I, I went to test the uh, test the checkout and it was coming up with like a blanket 500 error and I was like oh, are you absolutely joking me like because I don't know Pearl like, I don't know where to even start looking at this kind of thing so a lot of probing around and, and like kind of blanket searches on Google for like Pearl 500 error, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like stupid stuff that you'd never even think about Googling, but I had no more information to go on because it was on shared hosting. Couldn't get access to the error logs and couldn't turn friendly error messages on to see actually what was going on. But like, you know what you should have done? What's that? You should have called one and one. I should have just quit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I managed to kind of narrow it down to file permissions on the, the files in the checkout. And oh. yeah, so oh, I, I set the, the file permission or where we'd uploaded a previous version of of the checkout. I think the permissions had, had gone across incorrectly. So then we just needed to reset the permissions and everything, everything was fine. So yeah, that was, it's been a stressful few days. And then, yeah, I had, had Monday afternoon off because I went up to Norwich to, to see a band with a few mates. Um, ended up having my phone stolen at the gig, which oh, was wonderful. Oh, yeah, you yeah. said, didn't you? Yeah, Pickpocketed. So, yeah. Um, Nightmare. I can't remember. Oh, all I can imagine is I was stood at the front and then took my phone out, took a picture, and obviously it's very crowded up by the front, and put it back in my pocket. Someone said, me put it back in my pocket, and I'm not going to notice someone putting their hand in my pocket in, in that, yeah. that kind of environment. Um, but, yeah, so luckily my new phone turned up today and my SIM card turned up today, and it's, yeah. Just waiting for that to activate, and I'm back online. That's two out of the four of us that have lost phones already. Oh, yeah, bad year. <laughs> so you two are next. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, not me. Oh, not you. Yeah, yeah you two. Are, yeah, and then uh, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's, it's nothing worse than losing your phone, is it? Just feel naked. Oh, about it. it's like, it's horrendous. Yeah, and like you sit there panicking, like yeah, just oh, good, yeah, because all my stuff, like I've got my my banking apps on there, and I've got yeah. like my email and all this kind of stuff, and I've got the like the easiest pass. <laughs> Pass pattern to unlock on my phone. So, yeah, like, well, like four of my friends' phone as soon as I realised cancelled everything, and uh, and yeah, and then as I was drunk, rebought myself a new phone. So it was it hurt, it hurt less because I was I had a few drinks. Uh, what band were you seeing then? Uh, less than Jake and Real Big Fish. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Is that two bands awesome, or man. one band with a really long name? <laughs> What's that? Oh, no, there's two different bands. Yeah, one band called Less than Jake and one band called Real Big Fish. But yeah, me and my friends. Jake seen... and Real Big Fish. Yeah. Less yeah, than Jake so we, must be going for donkey's years. I mean, that's the thing, yeah, because I saw I saw their first ever UK gig, and that was in it was either in ninety eight or ninety nine yeah. at Redden Festival, um, and uh, yeah, and then like I've probably seen them, I think maybe ten or fifteen times or something, wow. but just uh, still absolutely phenomenal, though, man. Like I can't. I've never I can't, heard of them. I must. I've never heard of them at all. Um, then I, I have to look them up. I mean, they had a couple of big hits, didn't they? Well, I say big hits, like, they even in that, uh, yeah, like, like Gainesville Rock City. Um, and uh, all my best friends are metalheads, and yeah, yeah, kind of big hits in that that genre, I guess. Not obviously yeah. not like big in the UK charts and stuff, but um, yeah, no, good band. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a wicked night. Yeah, it was a bit of a damp dampener, but it was yeah, it was just yeah, a yeah. pretty good night. Oh, amazing! That's, that's, cool. Yeah. Um, oh. So it's probably um, listening to this, going get to the web stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. We're trying to put it off as long we're as we can. <laughs> So, you guys see anything good on TV last night? <laughs> How make of these weather. winds today? Oh, it's a little bit windy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was watching a show about wind once. So it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Well, what about uh, anyway. hot picks, I guess? Anyone uh, got anything they want to uh, mention? I don't really have any hot picks. I've been playing a lot in the last couple of days with um, CSS 3D transitions. Yeah. Um, and they're really like. Because what I was trying to do, I had like a, a photograph and I was trying to superimpose an image over, obviously like a, a, a 3D perceived space within the photograph. So you've got like a, a table that you're trying to lay this photograph or, or whatever down on top of the table so it looks as though it's a part of the image. Um, it's just really, really fiddly. But it's, yeah, I, I couldn't really work out a formula because my intention was to like go in there and say, okay, well, if I can work out a formula and say, okay, this point, this point, this point, this point. And then work out some maths, so I couldn't do that. So I sat there in Firebug, kind of like making values go up and down till it fit perfectly. <laughs> so I still plan on doing the uh, the, the calculations, but yeah. yeah, not today. It is incredible. I mean, obviously we'll talk about this in a bit. Um, if we well, haven't really mentioned, but we will be talking about CSS today. But um, it's amazing what you can do with CSS now. I mean, you know, compared to like 
CSS2, I guess. I mean, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have a clue. I could, I'd say I probably know like 5% of what CSS3 does now. But um, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll go on that in a minute, I guess. Transitions is pretty much as far as I've yeah. like, got properly, yeah. apart from like box shadows and text shadows and stuff like that. Oh, and, uh, I think border radius as well as a lifesaver. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I used transitions. I had to do like a presentation at work, and I thought rather yeah. than using PowerPoint, I you know did you know nice transitions and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that was amazing. To, you know, out of the box looks so good, but um, yeah. But the more complex stuff, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't have a clue really. Yeah. But, uh, um, what about you? How about you? Because you you found a really sweet plugin just earlier. <laughs> I have, and then I've stupid. Oh, is it? Yeah, this is what you. Yeah, what this you're is the one you wanted tell. to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've stupidly. I've, oh, no, I've got it here. I've got it here. Okay. All right. So, Lou, I'm going to send you a link, yeah. and um, I don't know if I should <laughs> well, announce Skype. this link on the on the podcast, but well, what the hell? Uh, yeah. So, you just want michaelbud.org/insane.php, and that's just hoping that I've spelled. <laughs> you're you're right. asking me. You're asking me to do this now. Yeah, this is important. My michaelbud.org. And you need to explain to the listeners, obviously, what's going on. But I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to you now. Oh. Um, this isn't two girls, one cup, is it? <laughs> it's better. It's, it's me and Fraser girls, reenacting it. <laughs> okay, th three, two, one. I've hit the button. Three devs, one oh. cup. <laughs> <laughs> Who do, cup. I, do I have to do this? Okay, yeah. anything I say from now is this, right? Who do I love? Oh, hang on. Michael Bud wants to use my microphone. I need to allow you that. Who do I love? Has it not worked? <laughs> oh come on! Did it work? I've just had I've just had a pop up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does it say? Um, this is awkward. I don't know how he knows this, but it says you love Fraser's mum. Oh, it's predictable. Everyone loves my mum. <laughs> yeah, we. How cool is that though? Like, that is awesome. How, have, you, have you made that mic then, or you no, something oh, you found? Oh, I wish. I just um. I thought I'd do a little bit of research for the podcast because I never have anything to bring to it. So um, I just basically looked at uh, best podcast for 2014 and I found this one. If you view the source on Did the we? page, oh, we didn't, we didn't come up the top of that list then. Uh, <laughs> we were, we were close. Um, but <laughs> yeah, if you just view the source on that page, like you can see, oh, all right, just how simple it is. It literally took me 30 seconds to put together, and you can see like the different uh, commands that you can put in there. Um, but sorry, we should explain to everyone what's going on here. But basically, this plugin um, it taps into your microphone on your computer. Obviously, you have to give it permission, and then you say a command, and then basically you pass a function to say what should happen if you know if it reads out one of the commands that you've listed. So I've got one that says um, "Who do I love?" and then there's a function and, a, and an alert, basically JavaScript alert. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's probably yeah, it's really cool because. The plugin is tiny as anything. I think it's like yeah. a two K file, and like the compressed version is, well, it's just well tiny. Like I can't even, yeah, yeah, I can't even fathom how it's working. Yeah. Like I'm not sure if it's if it's doing it through your hardware or if it's doing it through that little library. Whether that's interpreting everything or it's weird. Yeah. I mean, this is where we need Ed, but I, I have no idea. Like you say, the the JavaScript is so. What we took like twenty lines, if that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the actual. Um, yeah, trying to work out what it's saying. I've no idea what's going on. Like you say, I've no idea where that's happening. Uh, it's just witchcraft. But um, that should be a little task for us for the next yeah. week's show to work out how it does it. And yeah, exactly. We'll try and come back with a decent answer. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you could probably think of more practical things to do than what I've done. But um, I, I thought that was pretty amazing. That is really cool. I've never seen any plugins that do that sort of thing before. Yeah, I've, I've never seen uh, any website on the internet before that with uh, that, that actually that. uses the microphone. Voice recognition. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I was expecting. I was wondering, like, if I was going to hear something back, or <laughs> oh, we <laughs> should have done scary time. maze. That would have been sweet. <laughs> yeah, there must be a way of doing that. Like, you you record your answer into there. If it can, oh, yeah. if it can access one microphone, then there's no reason oh. it must be able to do that. Without a doubt, I just. Uh, I mean, I did this in like you know twenty seconds, but given a bit more time, <laughs> you could do all sorts with that. So nice. So that is my my hot pick really for the week. That's all I've uh, I found. But, um, How about you, Lou? You got anything? Uh, I've got I've got I have got one thing actually. <laughs> um, remember me saying last week about um, PDFs and messing around with various libraries and things yes. like that. 
the one the one I've gone with is Dom PDF, and um, I gave them a little thank you on Twitter actually. Oh, but um, what what I was looking for was the ability to just be able to write an HTML file and then um, basically just like string replace whichever areas needed to be dynamic right, yep. in that file, and then just use something that reads that into a PDF, and that is exactly what Dom PDF does. Um, so yeah, spot on there. And the only the only issues that that are a bit tricky you know there's some styling things that are that are quite fiddly um it's quite hard to get things lined up exactly as you like i don't think it supports like all css commands and things um that and also i like to use i like to use tim thumb for resizing images and i am i haven't been able to get that working on there yet either yeah but hope hopefully uh tim thumb's very good by the way what is yeah what is tim thumb tim tim thumb literally it, it it resizes images on the fly and zooms and crops and does whatever you want to do basically all, all you do in in the you, you have an image tag uh -huh. and then in the source of the image tag you just put um literally where your tim thumb script is and then you basically do tim thumb dot php right um question mark so like where you're going into like get variables question mark um source equals and then the path to your file oh, no way and then once you've put the path to your file you literally put like and w equals 300 and h equals 500 right yep to set width and height um gotcha. And yeah, it's brilliant. It's um, it's it's not great if you've got a slightly older uh, server. It can be a bit temperamental, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I like to use that on on everything now because it's just just nice and easy, and uh, and res and resizes images. You know, most of the sites I've done have got Tim Thumb plastered all over it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, those are yeah, those are my two main things. I think that I'll push this week. I'll put a couple nice. of links up for them. Yeah, yeah. you sorry. might. Oh no, sorry, we've just done you, haven't we, Fraser? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't actually have any any plugins. I'd, I'd recommend, in terms of we're talking about images, this is something that that came up today at work. Um, I think Simple PHP. Let me have a look. No, Simple. Yeah, Simple Image. It's uh, an image class that, that someone's created and chucked up on GitHub, and I'll put the link to that in the show notes as well. It's just a really really simple way of resizing all your images and what have you. So when you're doing an image uploader, giving clients the ability to to upload their own images to the file system and stuff. Obviously, if you're going to be reshowing those to to through the website to, to people that are using it, then you don't want to be chucking out if they're uploading from digital cameras like eight meg images. Um, so yeah, you can just no. resize them to, to any format you want. It's really good to give you yeah, like a crop or a, a resize to a width or yeah, pretty much however you want to do it. Yeah, it's it's just a like really TikTok. simple way of doing it. Nice. Might have to try that as well. See how that, see how that varies. From yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I think I think it's a completely different. Um, or from what I understand, I don't know Tim Thumb too well, but I think it's. I don't think it works in in the way that you know you were saying that you you put it into the image source and you point to it there and it does it on the fly. Yeah. I don't think it'll do it that way, but um, I'm sure with some modification it could it could do that. But yeah, I, the only other thing I was going to mention um, it's not really a hot pick, I guess, but um, anyone who listens UK has listened to this, they'll probably know there's a program called um, Newsnight, and for anyone who's outside the UK, basically Newsnight's just a program that they just discuss like latest political topics and stuff and. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going into politics, but it basically <laughs> they had a, a woman on there, uh, an MP, I think she is, and she's like basically, I think they, they've got this, what they call the year of code or something, I'm not sure, but she's like supposed to be director of this scheme, and it's all about bringing code into schools. Oh, like, yes, I've heard about this. It's a great it, idea. Oh, yeah, it is a brilliant idea, but this, um, I don't, you know, I'm, like, I'm not having a dig at her, but she uh, she basically went on TV and said, oh, you can learn to code in, um, in an hour. And... <laughs> It's really cringeworthy let's, TV. Really, the only thing there is, 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 is let's let's see uh, let's see all your websites and let's see you do that then. Yeah, let's put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, it's all too easy for people to say <laughs> stuff like that, isn't it? Exactly. So I'll I'll put that in the show notes. Maybe I won't bang on about it, but it's pretty cringeworthy. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing I had to mention, I guess. So, did anyone else have anything they wanted to um, to mention before we we get into the big topic? Or I don't think so. No. Yeah. No, I can't. I think I think I've <laughs> I think I've got everything off my chest now, so I'm feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, so this week, like I say, we're going to be talking about CSS or cascading style sheets, um, and I think actually uh, Fraser Hart has done uh, quite a few notes on this. So, uh, are you happy for me to pass over to you? Or yeah, absolutely, man. And um, I've like I said, I've put a few notes together and stuff. So it's just a case of more reminders than anything else. Um, sure. Have you then, put a quiz together? I've sort of put a quiz together. I was actually yes. looking for kind of obscure, uh, obscure things to find, but I couldn't actually find anything that that struck me as that obscure that I've 
I've not used before, to be honest. So I've, I've got a quiz, but it's slightly different to the way I did it. It's not a lot of questions. It's one question that kind of is, yeah. yeah What's it, your favourite CSS tag? <laughs> absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and if it's the same as mine, then you'll win. <laughs> what's your What's your favourite amount of margin top to apply to? Uh, we could oh, have fun with this. Absolutely. And it's yeah. got to be in REMS, though, because REMS is, is better than anything. But obviously, it doesn't work too far back. But anyway, I, yeah. I digest. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so uh, I thought we'd start off with with basically asking the question of, of what is CSS. Um, you've maybe seen the abbreviation of CSS around the internet. Um, basically, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, um, and it's a way that you can style your markup, so your HTML, um, and that's basically specifying sizes and colors and fonts and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, as I've written in my notes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and do you guys want to expand on that at all, just to kind of break down the definition of yeah, I'll give it, it a creates the it creates the visuals, doesn't it? Really, the HTML is the is is what you read, I suppose, and CSS is how it looks. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah, and I guess it gives you a, it gives you a facility where you can style the same bit of of markup. So the same piece of HTML, it means you can make it look completely different without actually sitting there and touching the HTML. So it's kind of good if you want to serve up different style sheets for different reasons and 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 what have you. Um, another question I've, I've got on there is why CSS? Um, we touched on it briefly with with that point there and it also lets you avoid duplication so you're not having to go through and you're not having to put the same colors in in every single paragraph that you're that you're using um in the olden days when when it was just html before css was was widely used when i first started using um or writing html and stuff it was kind of a case of if you've got a block of text and you want it to be red every time you write a block of text that you want to be red you have to say font color is red and then you have to get it your text and then if you wanted to have some more red text further down the page you have to say font color is red again and it was just obviously it's you can see the flaws in that because you're just repeating yourself over and over and over and over um so yeah that helps with well it helps you avoid duplication uh, makes it easy to maintain um and another benefit of css is you can also separate your your content from the side and so it's yeah like we were saying if if, if you're not constantly having to declare what a certain piece looks like you can just do it in one place, and it just means that you've now got a really kind of clear way of separating your content from your style, and so they're completely two different elements. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, I mean, mm. separation of concerns is is so important, and um, you know, you, you can, any decent website, you, you shouldn't be seeing styling within the HTML itself. Okay, adding uh, you know a class or something that's fine, but you know, all kind of you know uh, font colors, all that kind of stuff, should not be in your in your HTML, um, no. And thankfully, the web's come a long, long way since those days. But uh, I won't touch on that because I think you've got that further in your notes. So uh, yeah. Okay, um, Lewis, you you all good? Good so far? The only yeah, C CSS. I I actually think out of like all the markups you write, like HTML, PHP, or whatever, I think CSS is the hardest code to be clean with. Right. Yeah. It's it's I think because. The problem is, like before you start off making any website, usually you'll have a PSD or something like that, so you have an idea of of kind of what the HTML is going to look like or whatever. Yeah. But the CSS kind of builds and changes as you go. Yeah. So um, I think I think to be good at CSS is a really really good skill actually, and it's uh, it's something that certainly has taken me a long while to get used to, and I'm it's still by no means my strong suit at all, but um, I'm far more confident with it these days. But yeah, I usually go back and. And tidy up my CSS quite a lot yeah. because it, it tends, it's very very easy to let it slip away from you. It I really think. is, isn't it? And to lose yeah. control of, yeah. yeah. And before you know it, yeah, I mean, you you have duplicated the same stuff. Yeah. Sometimes without even realizing. I think you're yeah. right, though. I mean, it, it is an area that is again, it's a real. Um, you know, some people are really fantastic at keeping their CSS clean, and it's like artwork when you see it. Sometimes, I mean, and there's yeah. people out there who've like really, kind of made a name for themselves just by being gurus at CSS like Chris Coyer and, and those kind of people who, yeah. you know, you go to Google and you search for something, you, nine times out of ten you'll find his site there, won't you? Um, so it is definitely, it is something hard to keep clean, I think. Um, but it's worth doing and, and again, one of the things we talked about in all our podcasts is craftsmanship and trying to keep things clean. And that, yeah. that goes to your CSS and I've seen it loads, I'm sure you guys have where like you go into someone else's CSS file and it's just a mess and yeah. you don't want to touch it. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely say to everyone, start off with good practice and try and keep your yeah. your CSS all nicely indented and all that kind of stuff. Make it make it really clear what belongs to what. Yeah, 
I always, I always find as well something that leads to to messy CSS and unmanageable CSS as much from my own experience is when you've got. It goes back to something we discussed a few weeks ago, but like scope sc- uh, scope creep as well. Like yeah. you can, like say for instance, you're working with a designer and he gives you this PSD and then you do all this kind of stuff and, and you make it look exactly as it needs to look. And then they say, oh, actually, yeah, on this one page, can we have this button over on the right or on this thing over here? Can we have this up there yeah. rather than the convention throughout the rest of the site? And you're like, it, it's, it, it becomes difficult then to separate the odd elements that they're chucking into to try and, uh, I don't know, I guess kind of these these little changes that are just a case of like dragging a box across on Photoshop or in whatever they're designing it on. But when it comes to actually coding it, it starts to starts to make things a little bit messy. Yeah. Like if you hear that a lot from designers, don't you? Like they they say, Oh, I assume it'll be fairly easy for you just to move that over there, will it? Yeah. And mm. you're like, Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I'll just fixed position this and <laughs> yeah and then put some jquery on to keep it in position and uh, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've all been there absolutely yeah. the um, best day for me in css was when i learned how to use absolute and relative positioning <laughs> properly yes yeah. yeah i mean it's it's a it's a it's a lot it's i guess it's kind of a go-to method eventually if i if i have to but it's nice to know that i mean it's a bailout isn't it really yeah. yeah, I mean, there are certain applications, like certain times you do need to use absolute position, I guess. So, say, for instance, you've got like a, a section page on a on a store and then you've got like your, your boxes with an image and then the title of the of the product in there as well. Like it's, it's sometimes a good idea to absolutely position the title so it sits at the bottom of the box over the over the image. Like you'll need to use it every now and again. Um, but yeah, I think like like internet as as a general rule. It should be used to an absolute minimum. Yeah, it's good. It's good also for um, if you've got a responsive container for keeping it central as well. Yeah, um, I think you do like you position absolute. Oh, and then left fifty percent. And then left fifty percent, and then yeah. minus half of the the width of whatever it is yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that's 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 where I I, I was really chuffed when I found that actually. I was yeah. like, oh, cool. It's not as difficult because one way I got shown to do that kind of thing was that you have to make like this offset div. To the yeah. left and to the right, that can be dynamic, and I thought it's got to be an easier <coughs> way than that. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And then, so before the days of CSS, what what experience do you guys have of, of before CSS came along? Were you were you doing stuff before pre CSS or? Yeah, I've got <laughs> before I kind of started self teaching my uh, the web stuff that I was doing. I actually did a short open university course. Yeah. And it was um, it was an introduction to website. Uh, I think it was website design or development or something like that. Yeah. And um, this was what was this? This was about I don't know three and a half years ago. And it was a it was a three month course, and it was purely tables, and there was no um, external style sheets or anything like that. Yeah. It was it was kind of the the complete opposite way that I realised I should have been taught initially. But yep. I guess the good thing that came from that is that I learned what was the wrong way before the right way. Yeah. But, you know yeah, what? you would... Oh, sorry, man. Yeah. No, that's all right. No, go for it. I was just going to say, I mean, I, I did exactly the same thing. But when I was starting out, there was still a you know, really fierce kind of debate about whether to use tables or CSS. There were still people out there. And it yeah. was still like, yeah. at the time, there was a really valid argument. People were saying, oh, yeah, you should be using table. Tables is better. Um and that's just the way that people were taught. I, I was taught the same way. In fact, you know, I think I confessed to you guys like the first site I ever made was like in Microsoft Word, and I like you know yeah. started looking at the source code that it produced, and obviously it was all in tables. Yeah, and that's just the way that I learned, and that was yeah. the generally accepted <clears throat> way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think then someone showed me is it Zen Gardens or something like that? Right. Yep. And then my eyes were opened, and I was like, Yeah, this is the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm exactly the same. Like when I first started, it was it was through the table way as well. Like, and it was, and it, CSS was around, but it, it wasn't kind of widely adopted. And it wasn't something that, that most people knew about. This was like back in, like between 2000 and 2003. Yeah. Um, and then my first kind of thing, my my first commercial web development was when I was working for a company called My Travel, who I went up and did a, a work placement with for my university course. <clears throat> Probably dropped out of university to stay working there, but it was. Um, yeah, like the designers would ship over a, a PSD, and I'd sit there with the slice tool and like cut out the bits that you could actually put real text in, and then cut out around the images so you could get the image compression right. So bits that you could compress with GIF to look better, and get bits that you could compress with JPEG to get look better and get the file sizes down. 
and and that was my first ever step into into web development. So you get this kind of like table thing, yeah. which was like had table width is this, height is this, and like everything was like completely rigid. Yeah. Um, and then say say you wanted to put a bit more text in than was actually available to for the space. It was like, well, that's going to have to be redesigned then, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. it throws everything out. Yeah. And it was yeah, it was it was the case. So you, yeah, you'll take out the the bits where you could put text in. Yeah. And then you have to wrap the text up in its own font tag, so you'd have to be like, oh, font family equals Arial, whatever the, the font stack is. Yeah. Font size is this, and then you'd have your strongs and your italics and all this kind of stuff, like all nested inside each other, and it was just horrible. Yeah, and it, you ended up with these really boxy websites, basically. You yes, just, you just, yeah. You couldn't do anything, could you, other than, like you say, <laughs> just having to redesign, basically. That yeah. That was your only option, so. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it feels strange, obviously. Anyone who's just getting into web now, they'll, they'll think, "What on earth are these guys going on about?" But it, that's just the way it was back in the day, wasn't it? You know, the yeah, absolutely. So, new, so yeah, yeah, the dark. It's probably days. possibly not a, not a bad. I, I don't know. I, I think maybe to to someone who's newly starting, I think maybe they should first like decide they're going to make try and make a web page. Do it two ways. First way, do it with tables. Yeah. And the second, and then the second way, do it with divs. Because that's, I mean, they'll probably initially find the tables way much easier. Yeah. But then once they get more confident with the divs and everything else, they'll then realize how much more flexible it is that yeah. way and how much more you can do with it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, show show yourself the wrong way and, and then find out the differences between the yeah. two. Rather, than, rather the, than just taking our word for it. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. Because I guess the big argument against using tables is it means that your, your markup, your HTML, defines layout. Yeah. Which, which is something that you want to get away with when you're using CSS. That's not the case. Basically, you've got your your content and your markup on, on in your HTML page, and then your CSS basically allows you to style that in any way that you like. So that if you do need to change the look of it, you don't need to go and like take these tables apart and, and merge stuff. And because all you, all your display and all your layout is taken care of with the CSS, so it's that's, that's another another bonus of it. Yeah, I guess one of the other things we should just stress at this point really is that. Uh, you know, tables are still a really important part of web development, and they've got their place. But oh, absolutely, you know, yeah, for presenting data. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, for not tabular for, information. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not for the design of your site, but for displaying data. Yeah. It's you know, it's the way to go, definitely. Yeah, completely. Yeah. So that moves us on to the ways you can have your CSS. So we know we now know that CSS is is how you define define the look out of. Of, of your web page essentially um, so you've got different ways of, of actually implementing this you've got your basically you've got um, internal external and inline and inline is is Mike was saying about that before like it's something that you don't really want to kind of get into because that takes us back to the root of restyling up every individual element on the page on the page within the markup so that that basically just gets rid of all the all the benefits of CSS right there anyway so we can basically ignore that so you want to kind of be in a position where you're kind of avoiding avoiding having all your styling within the the body of the document because it's yeah it's it's bad practice. It, it means that your code's not separated from sorry your your markup's not separated from your styling, um, which is what we're trying to get away from in, in CSS in the first place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, so then you've got two different ways. You've got your internal and your external, and then essentially you're going to be writing exactly the same the same CSS but it just means that the internal means that you've got a style block on the actual page itself and then an external style sheet basically refers to what you're probably going to be using 99% of the time anyway so you're you're linking to an external CSS file so it'll be styles.css or main.css or whatever you want to call it and that's the, pref the, the preferred way of doing it because it means that you can then reuse that CSS style in any of your pages and it gives it the most kind of it, it separates it more than you could than you could with any of the other methods. Yeah, and I think it's, it's one of those things where the pretty any time you see it now where it's like um, internal is usually if you've got to do something quick and you think, oh, yep. I'll just shove it at the bottom of this page. Yeah. Bottom of the page? Or the top of the page. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, again, it's another one I, I would say in general, probably bad practice, like yep. I say. And uh, just take the extra time to open up the CSS file and just shove it in there, yeah. I guess. That's well, the thing. That Sorry, go on. No, all I was going to say is actually um, that's one little tip that Ed gave me actually when um, way back when in our in our former days. Um, 
is when I'm when I'm working on any file, I'll just have have some style tags open in that file while I'm working on it. Yeah. So well, internal yeah. styles, rather than keep flicking backwards and forwards. Yeah. If I'm going to be working mainly on that page for a while, I'll just do everything on there so that you're in the one file, and then as soon as you're done, just literally copy that all into your external style sheet. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Like, yeah. No, it yeah. does make sense. But I, I guess it's one of these things as well. Like. I think I touched on it before. It's when you go back to refactoring your code and stuff, and I, I quite often get to a stage where I was working now right onto the next. Yeah. Um, so it's <laughs> yeah, and you'll yeah you'll forget all it, it. You'll think oh it's working like I'm on a, a really tight deadline. I haven't got the the minute that it's going to take to copy this into place in in the style sheet. Um, but it's yeah, I guess it's it. That's that's a a me thing. <laughs> like if you're lucky enough to have like two monitors where you can have more than one text window open yeah then, then that's good obviously but not not everyone does so yeah maybe, maybe that would be something that i quite often do is in sublime and, and a number of other text editors well i know it's definitely in coder anyway you can get if it doesn't do it natively then you can get a plugin for it but it lets you split your window so you've got both the the pay the you've got the the html or the whatever it is that you're working on and the css open in the same view but it just means at the top you've got your css and the bottom you've got your your html um that's a, a nice way of doing it Oh yeah, that sounds good. I guess the other reason people put internal styling is they've got their style sheet and they suddenly realize on this one particular page need to overwrite the styling for just yes. that page. Yep. But generally that's that's a cop out and there'll be a you know, you could go back to your style sheet and refactor it like you say. But yep. you know, I I've I've done it and I'm sure everyone else has, but Absolutely it'd be irresponsible for us to uh, advise otherwise, but you know, you guys should be uh refactoring and, and making it work. Yep. Yeah, cool. Perfect. Um, so that brings us to versions of the CSS. Yeah. If I, do you think I've maybe gone through that a bit too quick? But anyway, yeah, we're on, we're on versions <laughs> now. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so this is again something that we've we've mentioned before. Like you've got your CSS one, CSS two, CSS three, in in the same vein that you've got HTML four, HTML five, XHTML. They're basically it's the same thing that, that we're talking about. Like it's not it's never going to be a case of. Oh, I've written this in CSS one, so CSS three is not going to work. It's it, it's not. You basically you write in a CSS file, yeah. and then the version of CSS you use, or the features of whichever version of CSS you use, are determined by the browser that you're writing for, or the browsers that you're writing for, or the audience that you're writing for. Because CSS three is is CSS one and CSS two and CSS three all compiled into one thing. Um, but it's kind of irresponsible at this this time to write everything purely in CSS3 because it looks nice in your Chrome or your Firefox yeah. because there's a, a lot of people out there that are still stuck on IE8 and IE9 and stuff and a lot of these CSS3 features aren't compatible with with yeah. the browser that you're going to be using. Yeah, um, yeah Michael, you just chucked something in, in chat there. Do you want to? No, I did. That was oh, right, sorry. <laughs> this is just literally where you, because you've written the next thing down as browser issues. And, right, yeah. Uh, this is obviously uh, the, one of the first things that you realize when you make right. your first website is that you are fighting all these different sort of appearances in all the different browsers. And uh, Internet Explorer, unfortunately, being the main culprit, yeah. um, particularly versions sort of eight and earlier. Yeah. Um, one of the best things that I found to help combat that is that there's a snippet that I've, yeah, I've just put into the Skype window. Um, so you can actually just have specific classes that you can target in those elements literally for the Internet Explorer eight yep. and seven um because there is no way you're just going to write one style sheet that e even with a reset.css you know um you're still going to encounter these things particularly in internet explorer so rather than trying to write one size fits all css which is ideal obviously it's, but with for internet explorer definitely uh try and start implementing something like this i mean i always use that now do you guys use this uh, I do, yeah. I've, I've literally only just started using it in the last few weeks, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. And I kind of wish I'd started a long time ago. I re yeah, it's just a battle that, that you can't win. So here's a, yeah. here's a nice way just to combat it head on. And, you know, quite, quite often, you know, if you, with, with a reset file, you, you know, hopefully there shouldn't be too much that you have to do, but there'll always just be one or two things. Yeah. That, yeah, you, that you have to look at. Yeah. And there's a term that you'll, that you'll hear, or a couple of terms that you'll hear quite often, like, is it progressive enhancement and graceful degradation? And, and essentially what these things mean is your website should work everywhere, but you should also, if, 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 well, if it's required, you should also have it so it's got these nice bells and whistles that people like yourself that, that are using Chrome can use and people that are using the latest version of Firefox can use as well. And that's kind of things like, so for instance, you get a, a design and there's rounded corners everywhere and you put rounded corners in with CSS, 
it means that people in IE8, for instance, aren't going to get these. Or IE, has IE8 got around the corners? I think it might have, actually. Okay, so let's say IE7. <laughs> yeah. um, IE4. <laughs> uh, IE4, yeah. yeah. So you, you basically want to build it so, yeah, it looks nice in, in Chrome and Firefox with these nice rounded corners. It just means that when you go down to IE4, like Lewis was saying, or IE6, or however far back you want to go, the boxes are still there and the website is still... It's, I don't, don't even know how to how to put it, but like the website is kind of acceptable, yeah. and it and it works in the older browsers, but it just means that the the newer browsers get these bells and whistles. Um, so yeah, you should always be designing or building and developing with with the entire audience in mind. So even if like two percent of your audience is using IE8, then you should still be catering to IE8, even with maybe a lesser experience, but the experience should still be there. Yeah, I'm, I've banged on about this so many times before, but I, I, I genu genuinely love programming for the web. But yeah. if there's one thing that was going to make me move away from it, it would be this kind of stuff. The, yeah. Like you say, the graceful degradation. And I, I don't generally do much front-end stuff now, but you know, I do remember like countless conversations and sit-downs with Justin going through IE7, what's the website look hit, like here? All that kind of stuff to me is just... A massive ball lake but yeah. the thing that frustrates me is is obviously the the more modern the browser you use the more new features you have access to yes no yeah. one's charging anyone any money to upgrade to these browsers yeah but people seem so reluctant to do it that's a, i don't think it's people that are reluctant i think it's the people that that will or the people that can do it do do it but i think the people that that don't upgrade the browsers are people like my mum and dad like they've they've got whatever browser was on on the computer when they got the computer <laughs> um, and and it's it's not from it's not from oh I'm not going to bother upgrading my browser it's like they physically they don't even know what a browser is like yeah. the, there's, well, yeah, there's, uh, I'm, yeah I'm talking like clients of you know people that client you know our clients are, oh you know, I'd even I mean, say some of our clients I've had a conversation with with clients before saying oh I've asked the question what browser are you using and they're like Google <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like Google Chrome and she's like what's Google Chrome and I'm like it could because all, all they know is they click on the little blue E and then the internet comes on the on the screen and yeah, yeah. and there's a lot of people that are like that like they don't want to don't want to bag on clients and stuff. But I remember a conversation <laughs> I had with a client once, like because we, we built their website and then uh, and they've got they had well, they've got a CMS on the site and then we had a phone call at like nine o'clock on a Monday morning. Um, my password doesn't work. I was like, okay, um, <laughs> that, that's good. So your password doesn't work. Okay, so. Let me try and reset that for you. What what user are you using? What do you mean? What username are you trying to log in with? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> this this went on for a little while. And basically, it, it it came to this is like someone that who who paid us to build them a website. Like this person at the end at, at the end of this conversation, I was on the phone for about fifteen minutes. It turned out that the password they were after was the password to log on to their computer, and oh, it kind of no. yeah it, it yeah oh. it's. You know what? I obviously won't name names, but I think I can guess who you're probably talking about. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's not a client that we've had a lot of contact with. Uh, okay. What are the initials of this client that you're thinking of? Uh, AW. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That just gets worse. That, that <laughs> Put that one in Skype, Mike. Uh, okay. All right. I'm we'll, trying to think. We'll do, we'll do a it, dedicated podcast on, uh, on this guy. But, um, yeah, is that's it? a guy. That's a guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it, funnily enough, it wasn't that guy. But, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah that, right. that, that guy's not far off. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> it becomes an interesting argument, though. Like when you, when, uh, like I feel for the designers because obviously they want to design new modern kind of websites and everything. And it seems like a lot of the target audience still are just using these older browsers. So yeah. so much of their hard work gets dumbed down. Yeah. But I, d I don't know how you'll ever win the fight on that one. That's and, the thing, um, though. I guess it depends on the designer as well, because you've got some really talented designers. Like we're trying to get a designer to come on uh, the show next week. Um, yeah. So he, he's up for doing that anyway. So you'll probably hear from him next week. But yes. he's a, a guy that I work with on a daily basis. And I think he's really good because he actually takes the time and he does have an understanding of the way the web works. And he, he does take the time to to understand what things do work and what things don't work. It's not just a case of, well, this has to look like this, so it has to look like this. Um, whereas you get some designers that will kind of, they've come from, specifically ones that have come from a print background, where they're used to dragging boxes around and saying, right, this page should be like this, this page should be like this, this page should be like this. And it's like, they'll give you five different pages that all have to exist within a CMS. And you're like, well, this isn't going to work because to give you a CMS, it means we're going to have to 
factor for CMS completely different for each individual page, and it's just yeah, it's just no point. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it really does help if you work with a designer who yeah. who knows I the web. A situation like that with a with a website that was fixed height, and it, and it looked yeah. nice when you're on your laptop, but then suddenly you get onto a big screen. Yeah. And suddenly you've got acres of room. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, that was fun. And like you can see, you can see why they do it as well because I guess in in the print world, they they see oh, I've got the, I've got this this fixed amount of space to work with, so that's going to go there, 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 and then yeah. you build it and they look at it and they're like eight hundred by six hundred. It's like oh, it doesn't fit on the page. <laughs> <laughs> I would just uh, second that though that you know, good designers are hard to come by, and oh yeah, if you can get one who genuinely will try and work with the developer to come up with yeah. a design that's friendly but um, yeah. but also has a bit of knowledge of CSS himself and a bit of HTML yeah. and uh, and someone who will sit down with you and, and go through what you've done so far and just you know give you little pointers and I know yeah. you know a massive you know shout out to Justin I you know I loved working with Justin yeah you know, yeah he was very very patient so um yeah, I, I'm really excited about getting him on next week. Yeah, it'll be like a little reunion. So, no, we, yeah, he said he's yeah. definitely up for doing it. <clears throat> do we, so, we want to do this when you're here, though, Fraser, though, don't we? If yeah. you're not here next week, oh, we should well, wait because yeah, you'll yeah, be away next week. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll have a chat anyway and see when we yeah. can when we can factor him in. I think awesome. we should all, all be present for that one. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, that'd be good. It'd be like a little party. So uh, yeah, awesome. We'll get drunk. <laughs> Uh, on that note, actually, so just to squeeze this in, um, I think we did say with one of our podcasts got over 100 downloads that we would do 100 shots between us. Uh, oh, we did. I have no uh, recollection of that. Yeah, we did. Um, you were definitely in, Lou. You were, you were well ah, up for it. So uh, okay. we have reached that point. So uh, we'll have to do that. Not right now, but... Um, okay, good. We'll schedule it in for March, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll, we'll record a podcast while we're doing it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it'd be amazing. <laughs> Mike, do you, re- do you realise what you're saying there? <laughs> good point. So when you when twenty five sambucas are placed in front of you on a table, well, how about we do we just all do a centurion because, like with beer because yeah yeah because twenty five shots is quite a considerable amount and I can probably drink about three before I hit the floor yeah yeah exactly <laughs> I'm happy if I get that far yeah uh, sounds amazing um actually I'd quite like to watch Mike drink a hundred shots though <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'd love to. Um, I'm squeezing lemons into his eye. But, you know. <laughs> um, one question, actually. I think yes. when I kind of came into CSS, it was on CSS two. Do, yeah. Does anyone actually know what the the big developments were from CSS one to CSS two? Not really, to be honest. Um, oh. I think even way back when I was doing it, it was still CSS two. Yeah. Because I think CSS has been around since like ninety six or ninety eight, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. Um, let me have a look. CSS. I tried oh. Wikipediaing it, but. Um, wasn't immediately obvious to be honest with you. Okay. No, there doesn't seem to be a lot in there. Um, but I guess the point we should put across, I mean, for people listening, is that I, CSS three. Yeah, okay, it was a transition, but it, as much as it was more like a revolution, the amount of stuff they yeah. brought in was just huge, wasn't it? It was just yeah. um, insane. And it's awesome, I, and it's yeah. really easy as well to kind of fall into the habits of oh, this is awesome, and like using it on every project, and then thinking, oh crap, this isn't going to work in IE. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty much every day because it does it does make everything so easy as well. Like when when we're at a stage, I say maybe in a couple of years, because I still think it's a couple of years away before we can actually start thinking. I'm I'm only going to use CSS, or I, yeah. I'm going I'm free to use all the CSS three that I want. Yeah. Um. When we get to that stage, it's going to be it's, well CSS four, and it'll be even better, and then it'll be in the same predicament I am now. But it, yeah. it just makes yeah. everything so much nicer and easier, and like everything just I don't know, it just works, and it's just yeah, it's just but fun. That is a great point. I mean. I mean, how many, how many years would you say until we can do that? Um, what till till CSS three is so is we, we pretty can, common ground. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'd, I'd say at least two, at the very least two. Yeah, Lou. Yeah, probably. I mean, I mean, it's it's amazing how much stuff works now. Actually, it's quite good. Mm, um, yep. But I mean, I touched on it in another th- in a podcast we did a while back that I'm loath to use much of it yet while it's yep. not. You know, if I if I use something, I want it to be supported. You know, in IE nine upwards at least, I would yeah. say. Yeah. That's the thing as well, like because I think in by the time it does become to a stage where 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 we can kind of rely on CSS three and stuff, I think it's going to be to the point where IE isn't going to be a problem because IE is auto updating to the latest version now. For CSS, CSS, Chrome, and Firefox already do that anyway. 
So once all the old machines with IE get dumped out, then then we're on Smiley Town basically because we can yeah yeah. Do you reckon it will get to a point where those browsers just they just basically get rid of them, and next time you're switching computer on, you're just forced to upgrade? Oh, well, they already do it in the background anyway. Like Chrome and Chrome Firefox does. already yeah. silently updating in the background, and the latest version of IE does it as well. Yeah. So well, we, sh- we should get away from those dark ages then, I guess, eventually. Yeah, yeah. so I reckon a couple of years when they've dumped all the all the old computers, I say they, when all the old computers are in a landfill somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just thinking, because we're, we're rapidly running out of time, and we are haven't we? really, you know, we, we've barely scratched the surface really, but we could actually, when we've got Justin on, start talking about some of the features of CSS3, like, you know, yeah. you mentioned, well, Box Shadow and you know, all those kind of things. Um so I think that's pretty a good one to to discuss when he's on. But okay. um, I was just going to ask you guys actually because I, I I don't really do a lot of front end stuff though these days. But yeah, um, I mean back in the day, obviously you had two different ways of targeting elements, which either by an ID or in a class. And yeah, and I know with CSS three, they, they, you've got like M- oh, you pseudo elements in pseudo yeah, elements. Uh, yeah. Just why don't you explain that to me because I really don't do much of that. Absolutely. Well, you've got loads of different stuff like. You've got you can actually create pseudo elements. Have you seen like the before and after um, pseudo elements that you can yes. create? You guys, yeah, I've seen you, it. Yeah, but I've not. Really yeah, used basically, it. what it is is say you've got a div and you've got a div called I don't know, say div my div yeah. or dot class my div. So if you've got you've got this div, you you can actually attach this pseudo, what they call a pseudo element. So you can basically say in your CSS uh, dot my div colon before. And what that'll actually do, it'll insert something before that. So you can have, you can say the content of this div before is "Hello, my name is Michael." Yeah. And then it will actually insert that, but it doesn't actually make it a part of the DOM, which is interesting. So you can't actually interact on it you know, throughout the DOM, but it's kind of it's, it's something nice to a big thing that that it's used for and that I use it for is like your clear fixes and what have you. Because you know when you you'll create a div like yeah. a dot clear fix and you'll just you'll pepper that everywhere. Yeah. A really nice way of doing doing clear fixes now is you can do like dot my div after, and then you can have content clear both, and that'll insert an element after that that will clear both for you. I did not know so, that. that. Yeah, is so you don't. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really good. So you don't now need to kind of insert this this empty pointless div because you've yeah. just got it in the, in the after. Um, and another another good thing with CSS three as well, like we were saying about the different kind of selectors that you can have. So you've got like first child and last child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you think of your situations where you've got Four floated boxes in a in a in a div, and then they all want to be they want to have like a right margin of of fifteen pixels to keep them separated visually, so they they look nice. But then what happens when you get to the end one? You've still got that fifteen pixel margin margin on there, so your options are either to add a add another class to 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 that final element, which is going to then overwrite that that margin to zero, or you can just do it as a a last child. So you can have again dot my div last child. Margin right zero. Oh, that is amazing. I'll yeah, which is really cool. That. And you've got, yeah, and you've yeah. got things like you've got not selectors as well. So you can say, I want to select. I can. I want to select div my div, which doesn't have a class of. I don't know, Lewis div. So you can yeah. say <laughs> dot my div in brackets not, no colon not in brackets dot Lewis div, and it's yeah. It basically will select everything except oh, for the flashback. ones that it matches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <poor Lewis. laughs> I just want to play football. <laughs> I'm going to pick everyone else, not Louis. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, there is I... another one there actually that I've used in with Don PDF. Actually, actually, I, I yeah. believe this is one. Um, yeah. uh, page break before. Um, oh, that's, yeah. So you use that on. You can do that on prints print sheets as well can't you yeah like in, well it's literally in the pdf so right. everything on each page i wrap in a in a div called page oh boom um and then but yeah you can put you can put um page break before in there and uh yeah every time you get a new one it breaks to the next page oh, that's nice. pretty cool yeah mm. um that's about the extent of those that i've used actually well by my record we've uh, just got over the hour mark so i guess we we'll have to wrap up but is there anything that um I mean, one of the things I was going to say is that like we've we've not covered anything, and the couple of things that really um, kind of stick out to me are uh, something that maybe pre-processors we need to talk on on one week. But again, that that could quite easily be a podcast in itself, and yeah, and then asset compression, which is you know um, again something that probably needs quite a bit of time to discuss. So, 
Uh, we'll, we'll definitely do those at some point, and I think it'd be great to do when we've got Justin on as well. So, I but, think that sounds good. Yeah, did you guys have anything that you thought was important to say before we wrap up? Or did you any rumours you want to spread about Ed whilst he's not here to defend himself? <laughs> um, I've heard about the photography he's gone up to Scotland to do. Mm. Um, yeah, is he gone? He's gone to look for the Loch Ness monster, isn't he? <laughs> Ed That's won't the find it. He's we not there. <laughs> yeah, I think he's gone on one of those, to take photos for one of those U something sites, but yeah, that's yeah. all I heard. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, did he? He didn't fly up there today, did he? He'll have a worse flight than I had the other week. I don't know. Actually, didn't really mention. It's it's quite secretive, I think, because of the nature of the work that he's doing up there. Yeah. But um, air brazzers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Well, if uh, you guys are happy, then. Uh, Absolutely. I think we'll yep. wrap up. So uh, thanks again, guys, for listening. And uh, yeah, all our contact details will be played out in a minute in our outro. But um, please do get in contact with us. We, we'd love to hear your comments. And uh, really, we'd like to know what you want us to talk about. Um, I have got a friend who wants us to talk about WordPress at some point. So uh, that is on the agenda as well at some point. But uh, I'd also like to, yeah. I don't know if you guys mind me putting an open invitation out there, but yeah, if there are any other developers or freelancers or or anyone that, that would even like to come on as a guest yeah. host or, or call in, then that would be pretty awesome, actually, because it'd be nice to, obviously, we're, we're all good friends and stuff, so we know how each other works. So if, if you guys, did, or if there's anybody out there that mm. if you want to come on and promote yourself as a freelancer, <laughs> come and, yeah, get yourself well, on. and yeah. I had the I had the idea of that until um, a certain friend of ours decided to have a pop at him about Scottish independence this week. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> he um he gave us a really uh, David Connolly gave us a really good shout out on his last podcast at the end actually a very complimentary one oh, did he? so yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I that. who's David Connolly it, DC Radio Network this is a podcast I listen to a lot okay and, sweet um, got me into um, HMVC on Coding Nighter and all that stuff so he's he's an interesting chap um, that I thought Mike and Mike was going to have a quite a quite a heated debate with the other day <laughs> via Twitter but it, it didn't come to anything but you know maybe <laughs> maybe we could do that Mike. Uh, basically, the bottom of that story is do not talk politics on Twitter. And I, I always act like an idiot when I talk about politics on Twitter. So I, I generally try not to. And uh, yeah, that was my band as much as anything. But no comment on that particular individual. Um, in, all, in all seriousness, I think he'd be a very, very good guest to have on because he's um, he's worked as a freelancer most of his career. And, you know, probably uh, probably has some way. He's got a lot of interesting stories to tell. His podcast is very good. So, awesome. yeah. you know, we could, we could all probably come up with some interesting questions to ask there. Uh, to be fair to him, I watched a few of his videos and I, I really was impressed what he had to say. And, and he doesn't take himself too seriously. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's all. I'm gonna one say. Of, one of the nice things he said about us actually is, it, is listening to our show is like um, just walking into a pub and hearing a group of mates talking, which I thought was really nice. No, it's good. So. What, like, yeah, it's... listen to a group of mates after they've had twenty pints, or like, <laughs> no, just... well, no, he didn't say that. He right. didn't say that much. But okay, no worries. Um, but yeah. Cool. Thanks everyone for listening and we will be back next week. Or well, some of us will. So thanks yes. for listening. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. You've been listening to Three Devs and a Maybe. You can contact us at contact at three devs and a maybe dot com. Or follow us on Twitter at the number three devs and a maybe.